I was a Christian for a long time before I finally understood what it meant to meditate and how to practice it. But when I did and I began to meditate consistently upon the word of God, it dramatically revolutionized my life. And that's what I want to share with you today. This is Allow Me Brigue and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hi, this is Allow Me, and I'm going to be teaching about meditation today. Many people, many Christians that I meet today still don't understand what meditation is. It's probably the most popular question that I get where people ask me, well, the Bible says to meditate, but I don't really know what it means, how to actually do it. Even when I know what it means, I don't know how to stay with it until it produces results. And I was exactly like that for many, many, many years as a Christian. I didn't know what meditation was. I knew the benefits of it. I knew why I should do it, but the actual practice of it, I didn't know for a long time. And when I did, I was completely overjoyed because I began to literally see my life transformed. The Bible stopped being just a book to me. It became alive and I could see the power of God being injected into the different areas of my life that I was meditating on. And that is what I want to walk you through today. So first of all, what is meditation not? Or should I say what is biblical meditation not? Biblical meditation is not Eastern meditation. So Eastern meditation are the, is the kind that, you know, the Buddhism and all those kind of Eastern religions practice. And essentially it is about emptying your mind. I haven't really studied it, so I can't say too much about it. But the little that I know about it, essentially, you know, you sit in a lotus position and you're told to empty your mind and focus on one thing, one part of your body and basically just Hum. Now, one of the ways you can very quickly dismiss that as that not being biblical meditation is if you go to Joshua 1 8, when God gave Joshua that instruction to meditate on the word of God, how did he say to do? He says, The scroll, the law, the book of the law shall not depart. It means it must not leave your lips. You mustn't stop saying it. That means, first and foremost, biblical meditation involves speaking. So you can very easily dismiss that Eastern meditation as not being what God meant when he told Joshua to meditate on the word of God. So we now know what it is not. Let's go into what it actually is. So I'm going to read Joshua 1, 8 in full, and I'm using a combination of translations. It says, this law scroll must not leave your lips. You must meditate on it day and night, so that you may observe to do according to all that I have written inside it, then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So this verse is loaded because it shows us, number one, why we should meditate and how we should meditate. So let's start with the why. God told Joshua, if you want to be successful, if you want to be prosperous, remember that Moses had just died and Joshua was about to fill some really big shoes. I mean, he was going to lead millions of people into the promised land where Moses himself had not particularly succeeded. So God said, if you're going to do better than Moses did, and Moses did amazingly well, this is what I need you to do. I want you to meditate on the word of God. It says, when you begin to put your focus and your attention on my word, it is inside it that you will observe to do. What that simply means is God has written some secrets into his word. The Bible says that we have been given the privilege of knowing the mysteries or the secrets of the kingdom. And it is not hidden out there in the world. It is hidden in the word of God. It is in the word of God that you will see how to live out your life. It is in the word of God as you meditate on it that you will know who to marry. One of the things that people get confused about is, yes, but the Bible doesn't say explicitly that I should take a job in this company versus take a job in another company. Yes, it does. The Bible will literally show you exactly how to live your life, from what to wear, from how to speak, from who to relate with, etc. Because the Holy Spirit literally will be working with you to open your eyes. 
So if you want to actually live a life that is supernatural, where you are going from glory to glory, experiencing the miraculous in everyday life, then you cannot get away from meditating on the word of God. It is why you are focusing on that word and meditating on it, that what you ought to do that will unlock your miracle will become obvious to you. You go forward, you take that step and boom, the door opens and everything comes together according to the will of God for your life. So that is a major reason why we must meditate. Now on to the how. To teach you about the how, let me go back to the root word that was used or translated meditate. Now, the Hebrew word translated meditate means to read it in undertones, quote, read it in undertones, recite it quietly, read it in undertones and recite it quietly. Meaning this book of the law that God was talking about to Joshua, he said, take it and begin to read it in undertones. Undertone means under your breath. So it is not about you taking it and going to shout out to everybody and say, come and see the word that God gave me. And God told me I'm going to be this. God told me I'm going to be this. No, he said, you read it yourself in undertones, recite it quietly. So that is actually the process of meditation. You read it aloud to yourself as you simultaneously think and ponder on it. Now that literally is what meditation is. But what happens while you are doing that because when you understand the process of meditation it will help you stick with it because this is not something that you do once and that's the end it is something that you must consistently show up and do until you receive that breakthrough because the word of god is actually a powerful force that is going deep into your heart to remove anything that is contrary to what god has said you said to you concerning it because the word of God is a powerful tool that goes deep into your heart as you speak it to uproot anything that is contrary, all the belief systems, all the negative patterns of thinking that are actually obstructing the power of God from flowing freely in your life concerning that area. So what happens as you begin to read the word of God to yourself in undertones, as you read it and recite it to yourself quietly, this is what happens. As you speak, the words are actually being translated into images, pictures in your heart. So meditation literally is a process of taking the word God has given you, the scriptures, from words to pictures. What do I mean by pictures? You know that we actually think in pictures. So I'm speaking to you right now, but if I want to actually communicate something to you, I have to use my words to describe it. And as I'm describing it to you, pictures begin to form in your mind. So if I want to tell you about what I spent my day doing yesterday, I could say, actually, when I woke up in the morning, I got up, had my shower, and then went, left the house, and then, you know, got in my car, drove, and I began to give you all these details what I'm actually trying to do is to help you form a picture in your mind of how I spent my day not necessarily to give you words do you understand that so meditation is not complete until the words the words literally that God has given you the scriptures have become a picture in your mind and in your heart you will begin to see yourself the way God is describing you in that scripture so let's say for example that god says to you that by the stripes of jesus you are healed so that's a healing scripture it doesn't mean that i just say by stripes of jesus i'm healed and i leave it there literally just as words in my head that meditation is taken by the stripes of jesus i'm healed and you're repeating it to yourself as you're saying it you begin to see all oh, the stripes your mind will flash back and you will see somehow how jesus was bitten all so mercilessly why so that you can be healed and as you continue you begin to see yourself no longer sick because at the point where you begin your meditation your mind is full of pictures of what the current situation is so you may see yourself completely sick and you know full of sickness you can't do anything no strength but as you begin to say by the stripes of jesus i am healed what begins to happen is as you're saying that i am healed pictures of you in full health 
pictures of you doing what you couldn't do in that current moment begin to build up in your mind and you will get to the point where what you are seeing the picture that is in your heart is more real than what is around you that is when meditation has fully completed its work and usually manifestation comes very quickly after that okay so when you actually become that person you can meditating on that word you get to the point where you are now inside who God says you are, and then you begin to show up to life. You begin to make choices, decisions. You begin to speak like that person that you are now on the inside. And as a result of that, the earth has no choice but to respond to this new you and present you with the reality of what you believe on the inside of you. Let me walk you through a very practical example of how to do this. When I was going to get married, or actually years before that, I had come to the point where I didn't believe that I, I deserved a good marriage because of my past. Because I thought that I had done some things in my past that made me disqualified from having a wonderful husband, a wonderful marriage. I had just had to basically take whatever it is that life brings my way. And because I didn't really want any kind of stress, I thought it's better to remain single. But then God began to show me that I have a promise for you concerning your marriage. And the first scripture that he led me to was Proverbs 18.22. It's a very popular scripture and people use it all the time for marriage. And that's the first place he led me to. Now, the reason why you should go to God to lead you to specific scriptures for you is because he knows the state of your heart. He knows the pictures in your heart that are contending with the picture of how he sees you. He knows the very thought patterns and belief systems that he needs to address to get you to your manifestation. So you don't randomly just pick scriptures. You ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide your feet to the right scriptures. So God started me with Proverbs 18, 22, which says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Now, I read it the first time. Now, this is what I mean. The first time I read it, it's a very popular scripture. Well, yes, you know, if somebody finds a wife, they found a good thing, and then God favors them. As I read that, that was the first thing that came to my mind. But God now said, begin to meditate on it. So I obeyed, and I would sit down, and I would say, he who finds a wife. So very deliberately, under your breath, find a good thing. He who finds so the man that finds a wife has found a good thing and he obtains favor from the Lord. I began to do that over and over again. Then I began to see that a good thing is the wife. I began to see myself not as a bad thing as I was previously. I began to see myself as oh, I'm actually a good thing. But I, you know, then thoughts will come up and contend with that, but you're not a good thing. So nobody will ever find you. So that was actually what God wanted to deal with. It was that belief system that he wanted to deal with and uproot out of my life. Then he moved me to the second part of that verse that says, obtains favor from the Lord. Then in my process of meditation and just repeating those scriptures to myself and thinking about it, he showed me and he said, why is it that the man found the good thing in the first place? Is it because he was intelligent? Is it because he was rich? Is it because he really knew where to look? And God showed me that, no, it was because of my favor. And he began to take me further and say, look at all these people. Go and look for any couple and ask them, how did you meet? Most of the time, 9.9 .9 out of 10 times, they will say that, oh, I just walked into a supermarket and I met my husband. Oh, somebody just decided to introduce us and then we I, we got together and we started talking. Oh, we just, I just stumbled on this person and this is what happened. God began to show me simply by meditating on that word that it is because of his favor that two people can come together and fall in love. It is not because of anything outside of his favor. So when I saw that, that, oh, my husband is not going to find me as a good thing because I am good, but because of the favor of God. And as I continue to meditate on that, he then now led me to Isaiah 61, 7. So the next step of my meditation is this scripture that says, instead of your shame, you will have double honor. Instead of your confusion, you will rejoice in your portion and you will possess double everlasting joy shall be yours. And that spoke deeply to address that part of my heart that still didn't quite believe that I was a good thing and that I deserved 
to have a good marriage. So by leading me into the second scripture and I began to meditate on it, I saw very clearly that the thing that I thought disqualified me, the shame in my past was actually why I was qualified because I was good. No, because of the mercy and the favor of God. So I began to meditate on this. The shameful past that I had stopped being a hindrance to me. Instead, it started being a source of blessing. I began to see that, oh, it is because I have shame in my past that I'm going to have the most beautiful marriage ever. How did all this come about? From meditation. I saw the picture so clearly that when my husband showed up, I knew that this was the product of meditation because the marriage that eventually manifested in my life was double, in fact, triple honor <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Do you understand that? So you start off and when you start meditating is merely words. But you stick with it. You invite the Holy Spirit and you ask him to open your eyes. You continue to meditate and to repeat those words to yourself as you think about it. Take each word. For example, the same way I said, good thing. What's a good thing? And I began to think about it and ponder it. The more I said, the, my husband has found me to be a good thing. The more I saw myself, not as damaged goods, but as a good thing. And why would that good thing happen to me? Because of the favor of God. And literally meditating on this, those scriptures was what produced the most beautiful marriage I could have ever hoped for. So that is basically the process of meditation. It's not complicated. It's very easy, but it requires diligence. You can't do it once and then go away from it and not do it again. You have to commit to it. Say 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, I'm going to sit down and fix my eyes upon this word and fix my lips upon it. You keep doing that until that picture becomes so clear in your mind. When that happens by himself, the Holy Spirit inside you will begin to guide your feet. And that's what happened to me. When the picture became so clear in my mind, I just woke up one day and the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to change church and go to another church. There was no reason for it. It didn't make sense. It was, in fact, the most illogical thing I'd ever heard. But because the picture was so clear, I didn't even link it to marriage. I didn't go there because I thought I was going to meet my husband there. But that word, that new picture of who you now are on the inside begins to direct your choices and your decisions, begins to order your steps to bring you into the manifestation of who you now are on the inside. And that's literally what happened to me. I hope that helped you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll be back with another teaching next week. Bye.